dress up uh, like you visiting a friend. You make yourself pretty. Bring extra clothes to change on the house. So that nobody knows that they are working in that house. They do every Sunday because it's their off day, so it's their free time. It's only three hours, so you can get more than $100 in one day, just a few hours of life. Over the past three years, about 30 foreign domestic workers are caught each year for taking on second jobs willingly, even though it's illegal in Singapore for helpers to moonlight. In this episode, I want to find out why foreign domestic workers are taking the risk and how big is the side hustle market. Starting my investigation with Blessed Grace Social Services. It's a charity organization that has helped hundreds of foreign domestic workers with monetary issues. Yeah. Pastor Billy Lee thinks the number of domestic workers caught moonlighting is underreported. How common is it for helpers to take on extra work, a second job? I would say that on a conservative estimate, would be about 30% of FDWs in Singapore that are doing part-time work. Wow, that's quite a lot. How deep-rooted is the problem now? It's still very deep-rooted. They're always finding opportunities right, to earn extra cash. And also for employers, they would rather hire FDWs to do part-time work for them in their house because FDWs come cheaper mm -hmm. right, for an agency that uses Singaporeans to do part-time work, right, to do household chores. They charge us about $20 to $35 per hour. Right, but for an FDW, the, the most they get is $15 an hour. Right, some go as low as $10 per hour. Wow, at least a third of our 250,000 or so foreign domestic workers may be secretly moonlighting. Apparently, most of them clean other people's homes on the side. How are they getting these gigs? Pastor Billy has arranged for me to meet some domestic workers who have insider knowledge into the workings of side hustles within their community. How do they get all these jobs? I have heard that recommended by a friend. Some employers are asking their friends that if their helper can do also to their house. In the Facebook also. Yeah. There are groups in the Facebook that they put name that a part-time cleaner. The employer will be posed that they need a helper for what day and what time, what place. And then they put also how much they like to pay you for every hour. And then just PM them if you're interested. Where do they find the extra time to do all these other jobs? They do every Sunday because it's their off day, so it's their free time to do whatever they want. Some they are going for cleaning uh, when employers are on overseas. Which means the employer does not know what they yes. are doing. Yeah. Yes. Do they make a lot of money from all this extra part-time job? Yes. Yes. Yeah, in one day, uh, if you have two houses to clean and $15 per hour, then maximum is five hours, so you can get $75, then that's only one house. So you can get uh, more than $100 in one day, just a few hours. Right. You all know that this is illegal, so why do you think domestic workers are still doing it? Why they do this? Because uh, it's like opportunity to get extra income. It's help to their families back home. Do you think it's fair when you know domestic workers are caught and they get in trouble for doing this extra work? It's not fair because they are not doing heinous crime. It's a hard work money, not easy money. So jobs are easily available on social media platforms like Facebook. I did a quick search and, true enough, I found private groups linking people looking for part-time cleaning jobs and those who offer the services. Now, just scrolling through, I can see that a job is posted nearly every day. 
And mostly what I see are employers posting their needs for a helper to come by for a couple of hours and also their rates. But I can't tell from this group if everyone that is replying is currently a live-in domestic worker. So I'm going to do the next best thing. And as I'm about to find out, the illicit job market for these foreign domestic workers is thriving. My gosh, my phone's been buzzing off the hook. I found some Facebook groups that frequently advertise part-time jobs for cleaning and these are the people offering their services. I want to know if they are foreign domestic workers, so I'm going to pretend I'm looking to hire a cleaner. So when we tried calling them, no one would answer the phone. But the moment I started messaging them, my gosh, my phone's been buzzing off the hook. A flurry of activity. It makes me think that most of them are probably unable to answer the phone at this point in time because they might be working somewhere, possibly in a home with their employer. Everyone who replied confirmed that they are domestic workers who are already contracted with an employer. One said her employer actually knows about her sideline work and that she's been doing it for about five years. Others said they can only work on Sundays because that's the only day they are free. And one felt it wasn't risky at all. So this is what I know so far. Helpers taking on second jobs is quite common. There's a thriving employment market online for this, so it's easy to land a job. Which leaves me to investigate one more thing. A new job that is becoming a popular side hustle for foreign domestic workers. I've arranged to meet a helper who is going to tell me about this side income for foreign domestic workers. She has requested to remain anonymous. Last year, uh, when I off day, I go to Lucky Plaza or church. Then uh, I meet the like me at uh, FW. She worked in Singapore about 10 years. Then the co FW, if you want part time job, I, I can share with you. Then I ask uh, what kind of part time job. Yeah, they are uh, online selling. What is the stock? What are the items that you were going to sell? Send me uh, like shoes, t-shirt, cosmetic, bra, panties, many kind of Philippine product. I make the page in Facebook. Then I invite my friend about forty-five person. I push the product, all the item. So you will get the stock from the supplier. How does she pass it to you? Every Sunday of day, then I take the stock. Then when you have the items, how do you deliver it to your customer? I meet her to the Lucky Plaza, Wisma, MRT, Orchard. You know that doing this extra work is illegal, right? And your supplier also knows, right? So did she tell you what to do, how to like protect yourself? Yeah, she tell me. Maybe my supplier, before she passed to me, she separate one by one. So if I meet the customer, I pass it one by one. So it's not like one big bag with 10 t-shirts inside you? No, because the MOM, you can see the big bag, then you can show. Give us some idea, in one, in one month, Roughly, how much money do you make? Uh, last year, I take uh, 80. $80? Yes. What did you do with the money that you, you earn? For me, uh, I agree for online selling because I'm every Sunday of the day, can I outside, I eat, I pay easy link. I need to extra money because my salary is for my children only. 
very big money online so, sales. Eighty dollars sounds like not a lot of money, but to you, you're saying it's it's a lot of money. Yeah. Rose told me she stopped online selling because there were some customers who wouldn't pay on time. But a quick check online revealed several kinds of online stores selling items such as handbags, clothing or beauty products. Now these are private groups that seem to be run by domestic workers. The Manpower Ministry has made it clear that all work pass holders, including foreign domestic workers, can only work for their designated employers. This is so there is no argument over who is responsible for them. The law is also meant to protect foreign domestic workers from being exploited. As long as these workers are taking on additional jobs or doing activities which earns them extra income, it is considered moonlighting. So having an online business is also prohibited. I'm just looking at what the penalties are for moonlighting. And it says here that if convicted, domestic workers can be fined up to $20,000 or jailed for two years or both. And they'll also have their work permits revoked, they'll be sent home and they'll be barred from working in Singapore. I mean, these are pretty hefty penalties and yet many still risk it just for the extra cash. A constant refrain I hear from the helpers is that their pay is just not enough. I want to get to the bottom of this. One would say you're living with your employer, all your accommodation, your food, all your expenses are covered. So why do you need so much money? A survey conducted last year asked how much helpers should be paid. Out of the 1,000 Singaporeans polled, only about half say they should be paid more than the average salary of 600 Singapore dollars a month. I'm meeting case manager Jaya Anil Kuma, an NGO humanitarian organisation for migration economics or HOME who feels that the survey findings reveal how undervalued domestic workers are. Our foreign domestic workers are paid an average of about $600 a month. Has this actually gone up or down over the years? Not all domestic workers in fact earn $600 and it varies very much from nationality to nationality. Oh. Sometimes salaries are set by the respective embassies. For example, for Indonesians, um, they have uh, advised that for Indonesian domestic workers, it should be a minimum of 550, and for the Philippine embassy, has advised that it's a minimum of 400 USD dollars. The Indian and Myanmar domestic workers, they earn way below 600 dollars. They earn between maybe 450 dollars to perhaps 500 dollars. So we see that even though we take 600 dollars as an average, that is not true across the board. And how does the pay here compare to those in the region? So Singapore does not set a minimum wage. In other countries like, for example, Hong Kong, which is, I guess, has a comparable setup okay. as to Singapore, there is somewhat of a minimum of what domestic workers need to be paid. From what I understand, it would be about $800 uh, a month that a domestic worker okay. in Hong Kong oh. should be paid. Okay. Can I get your name? Bing yes. has been a helper in Singapore yeah, for 25 years and she volunteers at home on her days off. One would say you're living with your employer, all your accommodation, your food, all your expenses are covered. So why do you need so much money? Yeah, because for example, for me, if I have $600 salary, if I send 500 and then if I will be left $100, how can I spend for myself? Like it's not even a good allowance for me because we go out every Sunday to buy food. You know how much it costs here, buy my shampoos, whatever I need, my, my toiletries. Many domestic workers work here and they are the sole breadwinners of their family. Definitely they will have a loan back home because the process of their applying for a job here, they need money for transportation, to go for a training. So is 600 enough? No, it's not enough. Is that why domestic workers will be taking on all these extra jobs? Every domestic worker here knows that part-time is illegal here. But why do they do that? 
because they need to earn money. It's not for themselves, it's for their family back home. Sometimes I don't even understand why the way they catch domestic workers who are doing part-times is like they, they're like criminals, the way they treated them. I've heard a friend who's doing I'm sorry I'm getting emotional because I, I've heard it from a friend. Her sister was even sent back home. Why do they do that? Why they never ask domestic workers that, is your salary not enough? That's why you're, you're doing this? I always tell my friends, I don't encourage them to do part-times. For moonlighting not to happen, what do you think should be an ideal salary? I'm getting 900 mm -hmm. and I'm enough? happy. So if I have 900, I can send 600 or 700 to my family and I think that will be enough for them. And then the 200, I can save it. Do you think we should make it legal here in Singapore for domestic workers to take on extra work? Yes, I think the employers will benefit on that too. Because for me, if there's no demand, there will be no supply. If there's employers asking for who can do the part-time work, if we do it, it's cheaper. So I think employers will benefit on that for those who cannot afford to hire a full-time domestic worker. Okay. I can understand where Bing is coming from, but I can also see why the law is there. Though a part of me wonders if perhaps we should review it. I'm taking what I've learned to the one group we haven't heard from. All right, guys, come on in. The employers of foreign domestic workers. Okay, guys, welcome. Let me just start off and get a quick sense. How many of you feel that we should legalize part-time work for foreign domestic workers in Singapore? Just a quick raise of hands. Okay, so the two ladies, the two men don't agree. Sometimes they really need the extra money. And then there are helpers who get off, but they have nowhere to go and they can't stay at home, then they end up roaming around and they are spending unnecessarily. So why not we give them an avenue to earn extra and, you know, increase their savings? I'm against legalising the uh, helpers doing moonlighting or part-time because over the one week, some helpers are working very hard for six days. So the one day off was meant to let them relax, to rest their mind to rest their body so that they will recover for the following weeks. I'm actually on the fence about this because for me, go on, you want to go out and work, you can go out and, and work. But what if she gets into any kind of trouble on that day? So um, do I have to sort of compensate for any losses? You know, she may go out and work and if she did damage some, something in that person's house, like do I have to be the responsible one? If they get injured, they fall sick, who is going to bear all this kind of thing? It will be us because under the current law, we are responsible for all of this. So I do not think it's advisable to legalise part-time work. Have you ever heard of anyone being caught moonlighting and, and the consequences? What My happened? best friend's helper, yeah. she was caught and the consequence was not good. So um, my best friend had to had to pay up the fine, you know. Was she caught cleaning someone else's home? Let's just put, put it as she was in a shop working when she should not okay. have been there. And it was what happened ugly. to her? Yeah, she was give, given a war warning from MOM and um, she couldn't like get a helper, I think, yes. for six months or so. She was banned. Yeah, there's a time period. Yeah. They are blacklisted. They are blacklisted. Yeah. If an employer is aware that her helper is moonlighting, she could be fined up to 10,000 Singapore dollars and banned from employing foreign domestic workers. Should we limit the kind of part-time work that they would be allowed to do? For me, I'm only for if it's strictly for cleaning purpose. It has to be only to one specific additional employer. And if it's being legalised, then MOM should come with a law to say that this additional employer has to buy insurance for this part-timer. So if anything happens during that period, it falls under the responsibility of this additional employer. Do you feel that our domestic workers are paid enough in terms of their salaries? The average is about 600 a month. If you were to compare to a local salary, definitely not enough. But if you compare place of origin, it's more than enough. My helper gets 500 a month and I tell you, she has settled all her loans. She has made a three-storey bungalow in India. So I don't feel like she's underpaid at all. The law is clear about moonlighting. But how far can and should we go if we wanted to review it? 
I'm meeting lawyer Gloria James. She's had experience dealing with cases of helpers moonlighting, where both the employer and the helper were investigated. On the domestic workers' side, do you think part-time jobs should be allowed? Yes, so there should be some flexibility. I'll give you an example. My mother, she lives in a flat in an old estate, and her old neighbours, senior citizens, they rely very much on the maids and the Bangladeshi workers helping them, you know, to do simple chores, things like carrying my groceries from the provision shops or helping me to discard some old furniture and items and all that. So these are small work. They could offer to help elderly to do some cleaning services, that could be one. Or alternatively, they could also work from their employer's uh, home and do online businesses. An example would be there are occasions where maid travels back to their home country and they will come back with products from their own country which they could sell online to other maids or other nationalities would require them. So if we allow more flexibility, what do you think would be some of the legal challenges that would come with this? Perhaps draw some boundaries. And how do you think we could draw these boundaries? Maybe establishing the, the kind of work they can do. So you wouldn't want the maid to um, get into some vices and all that. So perhaps establish the, types, the scope of work they can do, the number of hours they can do, and a different insurance coverage for the maids who intend to do their own part-time work. So should we allow our helpers to take on part-time jobs? Well, I guess the jury's still out on that, because... There's clearly a conflict between employers and domestic workers when it comes to whether we're paying our helpers enough. But that's the issue, isn't it? Foreign domestic workers are still taking the risk to moonlight because they feel they need the extra cash. So perhaps it's time we look into the root cause of this issue to prevent the incidences of side jobs.